Now we're going to talk about how muscle cells or muscle tissue contracts, all right? And so I have several steps up here working up to the final big contraction and cross-linking of the um, actin and myosin proteins. So we're going to start out just for a quick review. Um, muscles uh, groups, a muscle is actually attached to a bone by tendons, okay? And then what makes up a muscle? In the inside, we have bundles of muscle cells. So these are the myocytes, and then we have perimysium around them, the dense reg CT, and that creates a fascicle or a bundle, okay? So one muscle is actually created by hundreds of bundles of muscle cells. And so, and then within each bundle, there can be um, hundreds of individual muscle cells. So then, going a little bit more uh, into the muscle cell, when we look inside a muscle cell right here, and I just use the skeletal muscle, a nice truncated uh, rectangle here, um, the first thing, thing you're going to notice are the striations, the stripes in there. And the stripes are basically due to two contractile proteins that make the muscle cells shorten, uh, which means contraction. So the contractile proteins are the thin one called actin, and then the thick one, myosin. And they alternate and they make like a hair-like structure. This hair-like structure is called a myofilament, okay? And so all of these are myofilaments going across and the two proteins, um, the thin one, the dark, thin, dark, thin, dark, um, thin, they're gonna alternate and create a striated or striped pattern. So now, once we have that in place, once we know that the myofilaments are in there, these are the th proteins that are gonna contract to make muscle cells move, all right? And so I just wrote this out right here, the contractile proteins um, that make up the myofilaments are actin and myosin. They're called the thin and thick ones. And sometimes they're nicknamed the I band and the A band. And that has to do with the physics of light, um, the light penetration through the cells, which you do not have to know. All right, so then we're gonna go on. And here is a skeletal muscle cell, sort of magnified, okay? And so basically I put the two RERs in here and you already know they, they're the only cells muscle tissue is that has two RERs. Now we rename the RERs and we call them calcium channels. Calcium channels, why? Because they store calcium and they store potassium, which are necessary for muscle contraction. So I have calcium in here, CA, and the big K in brown as potassium, okay? So the preferred name for the RERs in muscle tissue is calcium channels because there are blood pressure meds called calcium channel blockers. And so basically this is what's used the most now, okay? They also rename um, the RERs myoplasmic reticulums, or you can call them sarcoplasmic reticulums because myo and sarco means muscle. Okay, so anyway, out here you can see the myofilaments, see the myofilaments going across with the actin and myosin. So the red is actin, the purple is the myosin, and so these are the myofilaments that will give it the stripes right here. And there are little tiny pores, little tiny pores um, that allow these filaments that are like hair, little hairs, to go right through, they go right through the uh, RER, and they continue, there's another pore here, another pore here, another pore, and then it goes into another cell. So when one muscle cell contracts, then they're all gonna contract. It just like dominoes, goes down um, the whole big uh, long uh, line of cells. In the cytoplasm, which is also called myoplasm up here, or sarcoplasm, we have oxygen, we have magnesium and ATP, um, dissolved in that cytoplasm or myoplasm. And those uh, three things are absolutely necessary to make muscle cells um, basically relax. And so if you don't have these big three, then your muscle cells are gonna stay contracted and that is not good. That's called cramping or even a heart attack, right? 
So um, basically, this is just a little magnified view of just one muscle cell with the myofilaments going through it. Um, the RERs in here again, storing calcium and potassium. And then the openings to the RER on the top and the bottom, that's called a lumen, which is a central cavity or space, an opening, or they're called a pore, either one. So on the top, I labeled it pore lumen or lumen pore. It doesn't make any difference. It's a space that allows things to go through. All right, and then on my last picture right here, before we actually contract a cell, what does one myofilament look like on extremely high power? Well, one myofilament looks like a series of boxes, little boxes. And so each one of these is a box right here. And the name of the box is called myomere or sarcomere. And they use those words interchangeably again. And so each box has actin and myosin in it. And so this is the pattern. So actin, the little thin pieces, there's four right here. And so basically there's four and one big hunk of myosin dead center, okay? And then in the next box, it's the same pattern. And so basically we've got these four pieces of actin and we've got myosin in the middle. And so it just repeats itself the entire length of the myofilament. Now here's the idea, what's going to happen, is basically calcium and potassium have to build a bridge. And so calcium is going to attach to the actin like this, CA, 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 okay? And so a bunch of calcium will start attaching to each other, and so will potassium. Potassium will attach to the calcium like this. And so it's going to build like a little bridge. And so it's going to pull, it's actually going to pull the actin over to the middle. So we'll have some potassium in here, some potassium, and it makes like a little bridge. So calcium and potassium will make like a little bridge coming over, and that's going to pull the cell in, and that's contraction. And so basically when this makes the little bridges, calcium and potassium bridges, then basically you're contracting the myofilament, which will make the overall length of the cell contract and become shorter. And so CA and potassium are going to make these cute little bridges over like this, calcium and potassium, like that. And that's going to make the myosin move to the middle, and that is contraction. That's contraction by building those bridges. And then what you have to do is to get the, so the actin, this actin will move closer. It'll go to the center like this. It'll come over here and attach to the myosin with the calcium and the potassium. So it's going to attach right here, right there. And so then what you have to do now is once the actin <clears throat> attaches to the myosin with the calcium and the potassium, then you've got to blow up the bridges so that everything can go back and relax like this square right there, that little box. And so what are the three things that will come in here and blow up the bridges? Well, you've got to have oxygen come in here to blow up the bridge. You've got to have ATP, like a little stick of dynamite to blow up the bridge. And you have to have the big MG, magnesium, to blow up the bridge. And so those three things are going to blow up the bridge. And then the actin, the actin, is going to go back to its normal position. It's not attached to the myosin anymore. And so essentially, the actin will attach to the myosin, the myosin right here. And that's called cross-linking. Cross-linking the proteins. Cross-linking the proteins. And how do you do that? You gotta cross-link the proteins with potassium, 
right? Potassium and calcium. Potassium and calcium are going to make the bridge over CA and the big K. And then <clears throat> once you have contraction moving in, so it contracts when you cross link that. And now, now we have to blow up the bridges. You have to blow it up. So magnesium is going to come in here and oxygen and ATP and magnesium, all of it just mixes in and that's going to blow up the bridges and everything slides back. And that's why it's called the sliding filament theory because the actin will slide away because their bridge was just blown up and now it's going to slide back to its original position out here. Now we're going to talk about how muscle cells or muscle tissue contracts, all right? And so I have several steps up here working up to the final big contraction and cross-linking of the um, actin and myosin proteins. So we're going to start out just for a quick review. Um, muscles uh, groups, a muscle is actually attached to a bone by tendons, okay? And then what makes up a muscle? In the inside, we have bundles of muscle cells. So these are the myocytes, and then we have perimysium around them, the dense rag CT, and that creates a fascicle or a bundle, okay? So one muscle is actually created by hundreds of bundles of muscle cells. And so, and then within each bundle, there can be um, hundreds of individual muscle cells. So then, going a little bit more uh, into the muscle cell, when we look inside a muscle cell right here, and I just use a skeletal muscle, a nice truncated uh, rectangle here, um, the first thing, thing you're going to notice are the striations, the stripes in there. And the stripes are basically due to two contractile proteins that make the muscle cells shorten, uh, which means contraction. So the contractile proteins are the thin one called actin, and then the thick one, myosin. And they alternate and they make like a hair-like structure. This hair-like structure is called a myofilament, okay? And so all of these are myofilaments going across and the two proteins, um, the thin one, the dark, thin, dark, thin, dark, um, thin, they're going to alternate and create a striated or striped pattern. So now, once we have that in place, once we know that the myofilaments are in there, these are the th proteins that are going to contract to make muscle cells move, all right? And so I just wrote this out right here, the contractile proteins. Um, that make up the myofilaments or actin and myosin. They're called the thin and thick ones. And sometimes they're nicknamed the I band and the A band. And that has to do with the physics of light, um, the light penetration through the cells, which you do not have to know. All right, so then we're gonna go on. And here is a skeletal muscle cell, sort of magnified, okay? And so basically I put the two RERs in here and you already know they, they're the only cells muscle tissue is that has two RERs. Now we rename the RERs and we call them calcium channels. Calcium channels, why? Because they store calcium and they store potassium, which are necessary for muscle contraction. So I have calcium in here, CA, and the big K in brown as potassium, okay? so. The preferred name for the RERs in muscle tissue is calcium channels because there are blood pressure meds called calcium channel blockers. And so basically this is what's used the most now, okay? They also rename um, the RERs myoplasmic reticulums or you can call them sarcoplasmic reticulums because myo and sarco means muscle. Okay, so anyway, out here, you can see the myofilaments. See the myofilaments going across with actin and myosin. So the red is actin, the purple is the myosin. And so these are the myofilaments that will give it the stripes right here. And there are little tiny pores, little tiny pores uh, that allow these filaments that are like hair, little hairs, 
to go right through, they go right through the uh, RER and they continue. There's another pore here, another pore here, another pore, and then it goes into another cell. So when one muscle cell contracts, then they're all going to contract. It just like dominoes goes down um, the whole big uh, long uh, line of cells. So in summary, for the sliding filament theory of muscle contraction, what starts it all, and I didn't have this on the last picture, is a nerve. A nerve, electricity has to come in, and electricity is going to hit this structure, which we will learn shortly, called a uh, uh, axon, um, basically terminal. And so basically the terminal, uh, once the electricity hits this, it makes it leak. And it's going to leak out a liquid into the calcium channels, into the calcium channels right here. And so that famous liquid that's going to leak out, it's called a neurotransmitter. That's a general name for it. But the ones that muscle cells prefer is called ACH. This is a specific liquid that really makes calcium and potassium move out of the channels and go build the bridges over to myosin. And so basically ACH stands for acetylcholine. So once the electricity gets here, it hits the terminal right here, and then it's going to leak out this liquid, and the liquid will go through the pore right here in the calcium channel, and it that goes into here. And as soon as this starts leaking into here, it pushes the potassium and the calcium out. And so the calcium and the potassium will come out and then they go into the myofilaments and they're gonna attach, the calcium is gonna come and attach to the actin, okay? And so it leaks out on both sides. And so the calcium definitely will be attaching right here. And then the potassium follows suit. So it's, it's simple diffusion from high to low. And so potassium is going to follow the calcium right here and go in the myofilament. And it's going to start making the bridges, right? Make it attached to the calcium so that it can make a bridge from the actin over to the myosin. So the potassium will come out here and make a little bridge over there. And so basically you've got to make these bridges over the myosin to make the individual sarcomere, that little individual box, the sarcomere basically contract. And so everything's going to slide over to the middle to attach to the myosin. So the calcium and the potassium make these nice little bridges, nice little bridges. And that is contraction going, each one of these will contract, um, sort of like dominoes. Once one contracts, the next one contracts, the next one, the next one, the next one. And then the whole muscle cell will contract once all of these go, um, become contracted like dominoes. The whole cell membrane right here will all go in. And so everything will move in and contraction Contraction equals shortening, shortening of the cell. And so it moves, essentially it moves. When it shortens, it's length, right. Now, how do we relax it? Again, we have to have three things to relax it. Magnesium that's floating in the cytoplasm, the oxygen and the ATP. So this just will go from here into here, and it acts like a stick of dynamite, these three things. will move in here and break the bridges. And so all of this will come in here and break these bridges right here. It's gonna break them all. And so once you break up those potassium and calcium bridges, then the actin slides back. It slides back and it goes back to its original state like this, where there's a space between the myosin and the actin. And so that is muscle contraction. That's why it's called the sliding filament theory because the myofilaments do the movement. Um, the two proteins, actin and myosin, are responsible for the movement. So again, in summary, ACH has to come in a neurotransmitter and it's gonna make the cell um, move potassium and calcium out of the channels 
and then it's going to build the bridges, okay? And to relax it, you've got to blow up the bridges using magnesium, oxygen, and ATP. And what are the waste products that you accumulate in the um, cytoplasm of the cells? A lot of CO2, ADP, um, so that's adenosine diphosphate. So you have to change it back to tri. So you need some more oxygen in there and lactic acid, okay? So basically, um, that's a quick rundown of muscle contraction.